Many people are screaming, why is it so cold right now? And how long will it last? Well, this paper, A Climate Charlatan, explains it all. Anyone living in the southeast of Australia will have noticed the chill that has set in the last few days. After a relatively mild condition last week, an early blast of winter has arrived. The temperatures are well below average even for the middle of winter, and winter hasn't even started. So why is it so cold? And how long is the chill going to last? This is what many warmists are wondering, especially those in Australia. One of the continents where the bomb pushes global warming more than any other country in the entire world. And they have some cisplaining to do. The problem is that on any given day, the weather is different in one region to the next. You're looking at the temperature anomaly map for Australia. And if it's cold in the southeast, which it is, it's going to be hot somewhere else which it is in the center of the country. In fact, it is 12 to 14 degrees above normal in the center of the continent, while the coast is 4 to 6 degrees colder than normal, just on this given moment, which is now. So is it really colder than normal? Or are the ocean temperatures affecting coastal temperatures? Because that's what's really happening. Now, Published on the 11th of February, 2020, this paper, Impact of the PDO and AMO on Interdecadal Variability and Extreme High Temperatures in North China over the most recent 40-year period, brings to light a very important piece of information, that the Pacific Decadal Oscillation and the Atlantic Multidecadal Oscillation are controlling the temperature. Wow, now this is a breakthrough. How could the ocean temperature possibly control the temperature on the surface of the earth? Well, if I have to bring you up to speed, the majority of planet earth is covered by oceans, about 70%. That's a general average. And that controls the climate, the temperature of the oceans, not man, not you. It's not CO2. It's the oceans. But mainstream media wants to show you graphs like this, which are in abundance. If you go to Google and you search global temperatures, you'll get some kind of garbage graph like this, unless you actually know what to ask for or have the real data sets. This is not reality. The temperature hasn't spiked uh, some exponential fashion in the last few decades. It's just not true. This is the actual data set. This is the annually average temperatures of the Earth in the Southern Hemisphere, globally, and in the Northern Hemisphere. And you can see going back all the way to 1850 that there is no catastrophe. In fact, back in 1850, the Southern Hemisphere was much warmer than today. But that seems to escape most alarmists. In fact, they claim that since 1950, right about here, or the Industrial Revolution, that this warming is catastrophic and exponential, which on this graph you can see is, well, pretty insignificant on the large scale. Now, in the short term, since 1980, there has been almost no temperature change whatsoever, less than 0.4 degrees centigrade. And if you look at the natural variability just a decade ago, it was colder than it was just a decade before that by 0.4 degrees C. This is natural variability. This is not catastrophic runaway global warming or whatever they call it. This is certainly not a climate catastrophe. It is a climate fraud, which we'll expose tonight. On the left is the Pacific Decadal Oscillation since before 1980. And on the right is the Atlantic Multidecadal Oscillation. The blue shows cold periods when the oceans were cold, and the red shows periods when the oceans were warm. Due to the oscillation, not because of man or CO2, 
And you can see the PDO got cold during the global warming scare here back in 2000 and 2011. But the AMO has been strong since 1995, which is keeping the global warming ruse alive. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, if we just look at the spikes in temperature, 2010, 2016, and 2020, today we're, we've erased all the spike warming in the last two decades. In fact, we're below the average temperature since 2000. We have come up this month, but it will drop back down because of natural climate variability, not because of CO2. CO2 is the blue line here, the light blue line here, which shows no connection to the up and downs of the temperature. But what is connected directly between the temperature is the AMO and the PDO. Now let's look at this peak here, 1998-99. Look at that. That's when uh, Al Gore got all the momentum he needed to win the Nobel Peace Prize here in 2007. Even though the temperature had dropped. You see, the mainstream and the cabal, they don't care about facts. They care about narratives. We care about facts. So what happened to cause this temperature spike back in 1998? Well, let's just come over and look at the PDO and the AMO. In 1998, the Pacific Decadal Oscillation began to get cold. Look at that. But at the same time, there was a massive spike in the AMO, the highest spike in temperature in the AMO ever recorded in the last five decades. With a neutral Pacific Decadal Oscillation, and a high Atlantic multi-decadal oscillation, you get high temperatures. And I can prove it to you. What do you think caused this spike in 2016? It was a high AMO and a neutral PDO. Are you picking it up? Let's take a look at this temperature drop and see when the next one's coming. This is 2008. In 2009, during the winter, in 2008, we had one of the coldest drop downs in the PDO, and we had almost neutral AMO. So the Pacific Decadal Oscillation, when it goes negative and the AMO is low, it's cold. But when the AMO is high and the PDO is low, it's warm. And that's it. AMO high, PDO high. AMO high, PDO high. AMO high, PDO high, AMO high, PDO high. When the Pacific Decadal Oscillation is cold, the Earth is cold. Let's see if we can go back to 1993 and prove that. 1993. Oh, holy crapperoli. The PDO went from positive to negative during that shift. And it was also a cold AMO. Cold and cold means really cold. Now, the AMO has dropped off and should become negative soon. The PDO has dropped off and should become negative soon. So what do you think the temperature will do soon? Well, it's already started to drop off a cliff. And that is a boom to knowledge. Not propaganda, not a narrative, but based on scientific evidence, papers, and information that I've known for decades. That's now, well, being proven by new scientists doing the same studies we did four decades ago. So, what say you? AMO and PDO control the temperature on the surface because the oceans are gigantic heat sinks. 
And it's the surface expression of these water bodies that control the tiny little land masses on our Gaia. Hope you got something out of the video. Proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance. In a dystopian world where, well, we're still setting up this new studio. So you have to deal with the old laptop version. We love you. Thanks to all our one-time donors, our Patreons. Without you, we could not produce these videos. And that is a boom. Share this video. Become a hero. We love you.